Hello everyone. My name is Srikant Pagadrai. I'm a systems applications engineer at uh, Analog Devices and I welcome you to my presentation on GR Generalizer, a new out of tree module that uh, the systems development group at ADI has developed in order to characterize data converter performance. The outline of this talk is going to be as follows. We will talk first about the motivation behind why we decided to develop GR Generalizer. Then we will go into some details concerning GR Generalizer's architecture and the library on top of which it is created as a binding. We will look at uh, some examples of using Generalizer with uh, actual physical hardware that ADI makes. Primarily, we are going to be focused on how the architecture of the data converter and the other components that are available in an integrated system affect our choice of the performance metrics that we use to characterize the performance of a system. And finally, I'll conclude with some remarks concerning the licensing issues, where on GitHub the repository is located, etc. Characterizing data converters, especially the modern ones which support uh, giga sample per second sample rates and wide bandwidths for integration into a communications system or an instrumentation system is as relevant as it has ever been. But certain common performance criteria such as, say, receiver sensitivity are defined by standards bodies and historically even in the data sheets are provided in absolute units. But with the design of communication systems as SDRs and since system level metrics such as EVM and bit error rate as a function of SNR are very common in evaluating the performance of a communication system as a whole, the adoption of relative metrics instead of ab absolute metrics has been quite commonplace. But increasingly, since the emerging advancements in DAC ADC technology uh, to enable multi-channel, multi-mode, multi-band operation, and in order to support uh, multi-giga sample per second sample rates, uh, some metrics such as SNR and Synad are being replaced by other metrics such as uh, noise spectral density, which are uh, more directly related to the uh, sample rate that is configured when measuring the performance. So as a result, there has been a shift in terms of uh, preferring certain metrics over others in order to characterize the uh, newer data converters compared to uh, how it was being done maybe say uh, a decade ago. But additionally, another challenge is that uh, there are not many open source libraries available which are dedicated to implementing data converter performance metrics in a standards compliant manner. Proprietary implementations of course exist in software suites such as MATLAB, but we realized that uh, the GNU Radio community will uh, benefit with an open source implementation such as GR Generalizer. GR Generalizer is a GNU Radio out of tree module that is developed by the systems development group within ADI. It is based on an existing library called Generalizer. Generalizer is a C++ library that facilitates the computation of commonly used data converter RF performance metrics in a uh, standards compliant manner and it supports generation of uh, waveforms for characterizing data converters as well as the analysis of the data converter response to these waveforms, uh, whether that response is provided in a uh, time domain form or a uh, frequency domain form. Uh, in other words, users of uh, Generalizer or GR Generalizer not only have the option of selecting whether or not to opt for waveform generation to characterize data converters, but uh, are also able to utilize uh, time series data or FFT of that time series data captured from a data converter to directly compute the desired performance metrics. Because in uh, some uh, use cases, uh, 
FFT is computed by other means, perhaps by another another library, and all the user is looking for is an analysis of the FFT and the measurement of the desired uh, performance criteria. In most cases, you have access to the uh, time domain output in finite precision at the output of, say, an ADC. So uh, you need to compute the FFT first before moving on to the uh, analysis part. Generalizer under the hood employs uh, FFTW uh, to compute the FFT. So GR generalizer, as far as the terminology and definitions for the common performance metrics goes, uh, they are adopted from the IEEE standard for terminology and test methods for ADCs and IEEE standard for terminology and test methods for DAX wherever they are applicable. The first example that we are going to consider to understand how GR generalizer is used will involve uh, Pluto SDR or ADALM Pluto. It is a well-known transceiver module made by analog devices. It contains AD9363, which is an integrated transceiver with 12-bit uh, resolution, an operating frequency range of 325 MHz to 3.8 gigahertz and up to 20 megahertz of instantaneous bandwidth. The data converters are designed according to a sigma delta architecture and the transceiver signal paths uh, follow a direct conversion framework. So it is a classical design, uh, but as we can see in this block diagram here, we have uh, three half band filters that can be uh, configured in various ways. Uh, whether they are bypassed or whether the decimation factor chosen is uh, two or three. And similarly, we have a programmable filter at the end. Uh, again, its decimation factor is programmable. So the data that comes out of the ADCs is processed by the programmable filters first before it is available at the uh, digital interface. So as we can see here, because this is an integrated transceiver, it is uh, not possible to characterize the ADCs alone, but uh, we will need to characterize the transceiver as a whole. As a result, uh, we need to uh, interpret the results as the performance of the integrated module uh, as a whole rather than the uh, ADCs themselves, because uh, as the signal passes through the half bands and the programmable fur, it experiences bit growth, uh, filtering, etc which affects uh, how the harmonics are uh, filtered based on the uh, overall pass band and stop band of the configuration that is used etc we are going to start with uh, two classic uh, performance metrics sfdr and synad so to my host pc i have plugged in a uh, pluto sdr and the receive port of pluto is connected to a signal generator that is transmitting a 0.5 megahertz tone at a power level of roughly zero dBm. I configured the Pluto SDR source block uh, to operate in LTE3 mode. So the sample rate is set to 3.84 megasamples per second and RF bandwidth is set to 3.228 megahertz. Pluto SDR source block is connected to a Synad block and an SFDR block, blocks which are uh, taken from generalizer out of tree module, and the Synad and the SFDR ports are connected to a uh, number sync. So let us now run this flow graph to see the computed values of Synad and SFDR. So as we see here, there is a tone at uh, 0 0.5 megahertz. We can see a strong spur at uh, minus 1.5 uh, megahertz and several smaller uh, harmonics. So as we mentioned, in the case of uh, SFDR, only the strongest spur or the worst case spur is considered in order to calculate SFDR. And we see that uh, the number turns out to be around uh, 60, 61 dBC. It is in units of dBC because uh, I backed off uh, a little bit in terms of the uh, input power that I can provide to uh, Pluto SDR, the maximum rated input power into Pluto SDR. So uh, in dB scale, uh, we are quite a bit off 
from uh, 0 dBFS. So uh, we see that uh, the ratio of uh, the principal tone and the strongest spur is uh, roughly uh, 60 dBc. Because in the case of Synad, uh, not only the worst scare case spur but also uh, five more uh, stronger spurs are also taken into consideration. We see that uh, it is uh, roughly 2 to 3 dB worse compared to SFDR. So whereas SFDR is roughly 60, 61 dBC, we see that Synad is around 57 dBC. The second example that we are going to consider to demonstrate the use of GR generalizer to compute the performance metrics of a, a real physical transceiver will use ADRV 9002. Similar to AD9363 which was present in the uh, Pluto SDR, ADRV9002 is also an integrated transceiver with a frequency range of 30 megahertz to 6 gigahertz and an operating bandwidth that ranges from 12 kilohertz to 40 megahertz. It is a 16-bit uh, resolution device so uh, it is more suited for precision instrumentation where high dynamic range and sensitivity are of uh, higher importance. The data converters are uh, designed according to a sigma delta architecture and the transceiver signal paths are uh, in a direct conversion architecture so it is similar to AD9363 a uh, classical design in terms of the uh, signal path. As we can see in this block diagram of RX signal chain. The digital front end uh, consists of uh, many subsystems in order to implement uh, DC correction, DC offset correction, quadrature error correction, uh, automatic gain control and uh, programmable digital filters which uh, eliminate the need for implementing these functions in the digital baseband. So as a result, it is a highly uh, integrated transceiver. So similar to the argument that we made in the case of AD9363, it is difficult to characterize the uh, ADCs in isolation and instead uh, we need to characterize the transceiver as a whole. User configuration of the uh, Transceiver signal chain is mainly done through stream and filter profiles and based on these profiles uh, which contain parameters such as bandwidth, sample rate, AGC settings, etc. Uh, calibration is performed both at uh, startup as well as uh, in the background. So we are now going to consider uh, one tone test and two tone test using ADRV 9002 and demonstrate how GR generalizer can be used to uh, compute certain key metrics. In the case of one tone test, we are going to consider total harmonic distortion plus noise and signal to noise ratio. In GR generalizer, total harmonic distortion plus noise is computed by taking the ratio of the RMS value of the fundamental signal to the mean of root sum squared of all of the uh, harmonics plus all the noise components excluding DC. So everything from DC to FS over 2 excluding DC and the fundamental are used in order to compute the distortion plus noise component and the fundamental signal component is with respect to which the ratio is uh, taken. As far as the signal to noise ratio is, uh, is concerned, 
It is calculated similar to Synad, except that uh, the harmonics are excluded from calculation, leaving only the noise terms. So, uh, in the case of Synad, we considered uh, the ratio of the fundamental signal to the strongest four or five uh, harmonics, whereas in the case of SNR, we are going to be ignoring the harmonics as well in order to compute uh, SNR. My host PC is now connected to a ADRV 9002 uh, evaluation board. I have this uh, IAO device source generic block where I have provided the uh, appropriate uh, device name and phi device name for ADRV 9002 and I enabled uh, two channels on this board. Uh, also uh, when the Navasa board boots up or I mean the ADRV 9002 board when it boots up it uh, loads a default uh, profile and stream files uh, that configures the device in LTE 10 which means that the sample rate is set to 15.36 mega samples per second. As before uh, this is a one tone test so I have a signal generator that is connected to the receive port of ADRV 9002. Uh, its power level has been set in such a way that uh, uh, it is 0 dB full scale with respect to the input rated power of ADRV 9002. As you can see here, I have attached a, a THD block and an SNR block from uh, GR Generalizer. And let us uh, run this flow graph. As I mentioned, there is a default a uh, filter file that gets applied and that is the effect that we are seeing here where uh, at uh, roughly 4.5 megahertz uh, we see that uh, the stop band of the filter suppresses the out of band uh, part of the signal heavily. The signal applied is strong enough that uh, we see that the tone is uh, 0 dB full scale and when we look at the uh, second harmonic, third harmonic and THD numbers, we see that the second harmonic is roughly minus 75, 74. In fact, it is varying uh, quite heavily, which means that it is buried somewhere on the, in the vicinity of this principal tone. And HD3 is also uh, quite low which is around minus uh, 100 uh, dB FS and the THD computed uh, for this configuration is uh, roughly minus 74, 73 uh, dB FS. On the other hand the SNR wherein uh, we are ignoring all the harmonics in order to uh, compute the signal to noise ratio where only the noise components are considered. We see that uh, it is uh, roughly around 80 dB. Let us now run a two-tone test in order to characterize the intermodulation distortion of uh, ADRV 9002 using generalizer. The third example that we are going to consider to demonstrate the use of GR generalizer is a direct RF transceiver uh, AD9080. It is a mixed signal front end device, MXFE in short, and it supports four DAC cores, uh, which facilitate 16 bit 12 giga sample per second maximum sample, and four ADC cores that facilitate 12 bit 4 giga sample per second uh, rate. Because of this high uh, sample rate specification, AD9081 is well suited for RF signal analyzers, vector network analyzers, and other uh, 5G instrumentation or 5G infrastructure. 
applications which require uh, wideband ADCs and DACs to process uh, wide uh, instantaneous bandwidth signals. Compared to the two examples that we have seen so far, where the ADCs were designed according to a Sigma Delta architecture. In the case of 9081, the ADC architecture is an interleaving architecture, which means that uh, the ADCs consist of uh, sub ADCs, uh, which are inter uh, designed according to a pipeline architecture in the case of 9081. As shown in this illustration diagram, time interleaving or time multiplexing is a technique that allows the use of uh, multiple identical ADCs to process uh, waveforms at a faster rate than the sample rate of uh, each uh, sub ADC. So basically the input waveform is sliced and processed separately by the sub ADCs and the resultant samples are uh, reassembled at the output to form a high data rate representation of the input waveform. And in order to accomplish this, in an interleaving architecture, the sampling instances of the sub ADCs are offset from each other. And because we have uh, two sub ADCs in the case of AD9081, the sub ADCs are offset by uh, 180 degrees. And the sub ADCs operate at one half of the ADC sample rate, the overall ADC sample rate. But as shown by this uh, architecture diagram also, the requirement that uh, the sub ADCs are uh, identical is hard to meet. In reality, uh, interleaving architectures suffer from interleaving spurs uh, because of uh, sub ADC timing gain and offset mismatches. These interleaving spurs neither have the signature of a uh, polynomial type distortion like uh, higher order signal harmonics, second, third, and so on, nor the signature of uh, quantization errors. Instead, we can think of uh, interleaving spurs as a form of time domain fixed pattern noise. In 1981, uh, there are background calibrations that occur at uh, device startup uh, in order to uh, eliminate the effect of interleaving spurs, as well as other calibrations that uh, happen in the background while uh, the part is processing uh, wide bandwidth waveforms. In the case of the previous two transceivers, AD9363 and ADRV9002, we considered uh, metrics such as SFDR, SINAD, or THD in order to define the performance of the transceivers. Whereas in the case of a high giga sample per second uh, device such as AD9081, a metric that more directly relates the high sample rate to uh, the, a performance metric is needed. Noise spectral density, which directly depends upon the sample rate, uh, is a headline specification that is appearing in many data sheets recently in order to characterize uh, high giga sample per second devices such as AD9081. So noise spectral density defines the entire noise power per unit of bandwidth. This noise is spread across the entire Nyquist band, which is equal to half of FS or the uh, sample frequency. And NSD is uh, dependent on the sample rate and also the FFT order used. And it is affected by factors such as the quality of uh, clock input, onboard noise introduced by uh, power requirements in order to uh, generate samples at a uh, high sample rate, etc. So, to consider an example uh, for an ideal 12 bit ADC, which is in fact the resolution of uh, AD9081, we can show that the SNR is equal to 
uh, around 74 dB. And the noise floor per hertz expressed in dBFS per hertz is 93 dB away from uh, minus 74 uh, dB, the RMS quantization noise level. The number 93 is dependent on the fact that uh, AD9081 is a 4 giga sample per second uh, converter. Uh, but typically, the FFT is uh, taken using several thousands of uh, sample points, uh, perhaps a few million. But for most ADC sample rates, what this means is that the bin frequency right size uh, represents a span of hundreds of hertz or perhaps uh, a few kilohertz even. This means that the noise of the uh, ADC is spread across the entire Nyquist zone in relatively larger bin widths that are thousands of times as large compared to the bin width that is defined within uh, noise spectral density. So noise spectral density, when we say that the unit is dBFS per hertz, uh, what this means is that the definition is for an FFT bin frequency size of uh, 1 hertz, which is chosen as the baseline number. So even though in the case of uh, the FFT that is computed across uh, bin frequency sizes that are many times larger than uh, 1 hertz, uh, the total uh, noise power is still the same. It is uh, spread across much coarser uh, bin widths. So as a result, the typical FFT noise floor is almost always higher than the uh, noise spectral density. So what we are interested in is the uh, FFT noise floor, noise floor per bin, which is labeled here to be around minus 110 dB FS per hertz for an FFT order of 8K. So in this flow graph, I have the IIO device source where the device name and the phi device ID are set to the corresponding values for uh, an MXFE evaluation board. I have enabled only one channel and the receive port corresponding to this channel on the MXFE is connected to a signal generator, which is uh, transmitting a single tone at uh, 150 megahertz that gets wrapped to 100 megahertz. In this flow graph, I have uh, uh, THD and uh, noise spectral density blocks that are connected to the IAO device source that is communicating with the uh, MXFE device. And if we run this flow graph, we see that we have a 100 megahertz tone as expected. Uh, the useful frequency range here is uh, 0 to FS over 2 uh, because it is a, uh, a real waveform corresponding to which we are computing an FFT. So we can see that uh, there are a couple of harmonics uh, observed. And if you look at the uh, HD2, in this flow graph, I have an IIO device source that communicates with uh, the MXFE. I have provided here the uh, device name and phi device name for the uh, MXFE device and enabled uh, only one channel on the MXFE device. This is the channel to which I have connected a signal generator that is generating a 150 megahertz tone, which gets wrapped to 100 megahertz, as we are going to see uh, in a moment. I connected the THD block and noise spectral density blocks to the IIO device source block, uh, which are in turn connected to uh, a number sync in order to visualize the uh, second harmonic, third harmonic, THD, and the noise spectral density values. So let me go ahead and run this flow graph. 
So as I indicated, uh, we can see that the 150 megahertz tone is wrapped and appears at uh, 100 megahertz with respect to FS over 2 of uh, 125 uh, mega samples per second. We can see that uh, there are a couple of uh, strong harmonics. In fact, uh, a third one uh, appears intermittently as well. So if we look at the HD2 and HD3 numbers, uh, since the power of the principal component is minus 1 dBFS, we are measuring HD2 and HD3 in units of uh, dB full scale. So we see that uh, they are roughly minus 67 and minus 70 uh, dBFS. And correspondingly, the THD that is calculated is around uh, minus 65, 64 uh, dB. On the other hand, noise spectral density, which as I indicated, is computed by eliminating the principal component as well as all the uh, harmonics and is measured only by considering the noise components alone. We see that this number is around minus 140, minus 141 dBFS per hertz once the effect of the uh, FFT has been uh, removed in order to compute this value inside generalized. This value, in fact, corresponds closely with uh, what we saw in the data sheet. And as you can see, uh, GR generalizer can be used to compute uh, noise spectral density as well in the case of a uh, high speed giga samples per second uh, data converter. In conclusion, while it is possible to use uh, discrete blocks from GNU radio source tree and compute many of the uh, data converter performance metrics that we uh, discussed in this uh, talk, a dedicated out of tree module that computes such metrics according to uh, the definition provided uh, standards documents is definitely needed. So GR generalizer is intended to fill this uh, gap by providing implementations of common performance metrics uh, in a standards compliant manner.